All right, welcome to the Grand Canyon. How this canyon formed, we've got a couple different stories. If you're a uniformitarianist, then one of the first things you believe happened is that sedimentary layers are formed over 60 million years ago. Many, many oceans advancing and retreating form those sedimentary layers, and that's how you get the uh, rock layers closer to the, to the bottom. Then after that, 60 million years or so ago, the North American plate hits the uh, Pacific plate and when they hit, that causes great uplift. And so it lifts all those sedimentary layers up. And then a lot of the surface layers eroded through that process. And then, six million years ago, according to uniformitarianists, the river cuts through the canyon. We discussed the uniformitarianist viewpoint, now looking at the catastrophist viewpoint. All this area here, above the Great Unconformity, was formed during Noah's Great Flood. And when that happened, there was a certain areas, there were large lakes just to the northwest of here. And those large lakes, over time, the dam broke and just the flow of massive amounts of water caused this canyon to be formed in a very short period of time. This is contrary to the uniformitarianist belief that this Colorado River, the tiny river running through the middle of that, cut the canyon in a time period of about six million years. In any case, whatever caused it, one of the most amazing things that we've ever seen. Welcome to the Badlands. This whole area, they say, was once an ancient sea. It's covered with marine fossils. And if you take a look at it, you can almost picture it. But there's disagreement as to when it subsided. If you're a catastrophist, you believe that the whole earth was once an ancient sea during a great flood. If you're a uniformitarianist, you believe that just this area and some of the surrounding area was covered with water, part of that ancient sea. And then it took millions of years for it to subside as opposed to the catastrophic viewpoint that it subsided very rapidly. In any case, much of the earth is covered by marine fossils. So it's very easy to picture a large worldwide flood. And then when you take a look at an area like this, it helps you to envision it a heck of a lot more. Badlands in South Dakota. Just wanted to mention a little bit how the Badlands was formed. It, it seems there's evidence that this area was once an ocean, a salt sea. And there's a little bit of disagreement as to how that formed or actually how it subsided, how the waters went down. Now, if you're a uniformitarianist, then you believe that this sea slowly went down over a period of millions of years and left a lot of the structures like you see in front of front of you and behind me and on the other side there everywhere you think that it took a slow slow time over millions of years if you're a catastrophist you probably believe that there was a worldwide flood and as part of that worldwide flood the entire earth obviously being covered with water then it slowly subsided over time. And as a result, as it subsided, some areas might have went down faster than the other areas, and it might have left weird structures like this. Personally, I can remember as a kid playing in my sandbox when I was young, 
and messing around dumping water in the sand and when you do that you get weird looking things like this that are uh, pretty cool to look at and don't take a lot of time to form. So if you're a catastrophist you can easily envision that here and uh, also if you look all over the planet there's marine fossils covering virtually every area. So the catastrophists would say, well, that's because there was a worldwide flood where the entire planet was covered with ocean water. And the uniformitarianists would say, well, over a period of billions of years or millions of years, you have plenty of time for areas to become seas at one point and to become land at another point. So whatever you believe, well, there's evidence for either. It's kind of up to you to determine which evidence makes more sense to you. We're in the Painted Desert in the Petrified National Forest in Arizona. If you take a look behind me, you see the massive, massive amounts of erosion that occurred. You can uh, basically have two opinions on this. You got the uniformitarianist view that it took millions of years, over 200 million years ago. They say that uh, through wind and water erosion, that that's how this painted desert got formed. Or you could take the catastrophic view that after the giant global flood, that the waters were settling down and they very rapidly caused this great amount of erosion and left this look there. Kind of you picture if you uh, would take sand, that you take a sandbox and uh, pour a whole bunch of water in there, you can take a look at what the features look like after that. That's basically what we might have had here. A painted desert. In any case, whatever you think, it sure is beautiful. Well, we're still in petrified forest here and we're about to show you a, a whole bunch of uh, petrified rocks scattered in the valley down below. It's just filled with them. And uh, as you take a look at it, one thing it reminds me of is uh, taking a look at Mount St. Helens. The, the way the logs form there looks uh, kind of similar to what might have happened here. In Mount St. Helens, what happened is uh, after the eruption in a mud flow, there was a, all the logs were basically floating on top of the water and then some of the logs slowly settled down to the bottom and got buried and, and solidified. And we have tons of, tons of petrified rocks out there. Tons of logs that looked like they uh, settled to the bottom of what looked like it was possibly filled with water. So kind of a case for some sort of catastrophe there.